So, welcome to a Saturday, very, very, very special, the most special that we've had so far edition of Jimmy and the Fat Man. Reason why it's preliminary final Saturday, Collingwood, Sydney versus Collingwood at the SCG. Now, I'm watching it at home with my boys and my darling wife. It's about 10 minutes to kick off. I'm nervous, I'm shaking, I've been confident all week to the point where I was stupidly nervous. Now I'm not scared, I'm absolutely shaking. It's City versus Collingwood. Seeing the boys run out was special, sensational. Playing for a place in 22 grand final against the Cats. Both teams are raring to go. Look, I've said what I need to say. I'm tipping Collingwood by five points. That's who I am. I'm tipping Collingwood by five points. Flora pick up, may the Magpies prosper. Do what we do best. Make them struggle to score. Score freely. Kick those crumbing goals. Just get in there. Just make me proud. That's all. Colin would always make me proud. Colin would always make me proud, no matter what. You made me proud getting this far. But I reckon we can go one further. Take on the cats next week. Let's go. Come on, pies. I know we can do it. I love yous. Go, pies. Well, here we are at um, quarter time, sitting up by 21 points. Collingwood basically leaving our worst first quarter of the season for the preliminary final. And I'm not going to bother going through, but I'm guessing that statistically was our worst first quarter for the year. Um, our defence is just absolutely shocking. Some uh, it, It's basically a complete replay of round 22, where basically every single Sydney goal is a bounce goal. And I'll say this once, I'll say this twice, I'll say this three times, I'll say this a hundred thousand times. You have six defenders in your defence. When there is a scrap in your defensive 50, there should always be a defender on your goal line. Defend on your goal line, we stop four of those six goals. Hear that? We stop four of those six goals and we go into quarter time with a lead. Instead, we're down by 21 points. That bump that gave that free kick, Matt Stevich is an absolute cheat. I say this week in, week out. He was absolutely sucked in as he always is. All right, so Collingwood, so Sydney 6 3 39, lead Collingwood 3 straight 18. Uh, Collingwood kicked three of the last five goals there. Um, as we go across to disposals for the Swans, Mills has nine, Warner, Florent, Blakey, seven, Parker, Heaney, six, Reed, who's playing really well, uh, five, Rowbottom, McInerney, Lloyd, all with five. Uh, for the Pies, Pendlebury has ten, Quaynor, Crisp with six, Cameron with five, Lipinski, Moore, Howe, uh, Nick Dacos with five as well. Players that need to live for us. Uh, Josh Dacos only having the one possession that got smothered. Uh, Ginevan had a shot for goal, didn't score. Uh, McCreary had a, had an opportunity to kick a goal, didn't make the distance. In fact, didn't make the distance. Didn't had to put a pass it off to Ash Johnson. Didn't even do that. He needs to lift. Bianca only two possessions. Nothing. Cox hasn't done anything. Yeah. To go, we only three possessions that quarter, so yeah, still need a bunch of players to lift. But look, um, they've had 15 more possessions, they've been 11% more effective. Uh, we've had one more free kick, they've had six more contested possessions, but 12 more uncontested. They're, they're run through the middle, they've just, we've just put absolutely no pressure. Uh, we've taken seven more marks, two more contested, five more uncontested. They've taken three marks inside 50 to one. Hit outs are even, they led the clearances 12 to nine. Uh, tackles 19 to 16, tackles inside 54 to 2 in favour of Collingwood. Shots at goal, well, yeah, 6 3 to 3. Inside 50s are even, 16 apiece. Just our defence just hasn't been into it. Um, our defence just isn't working. So, look, we kicked the first two goals of this quarter. The first 15 minutes of the second quarter are going to tell the difference of this game, whether, we, whether we're into it. Um, we can't let Sydney score the first couple. We need to be at the 15 minute mark of this game. Sydney are going to play this for Nick. They look like they want to score 15 goals. So we're going to need to be probably 10 goals at half time. So, Pies, get into it. Let's go. Well, there you have it. Um, it's going to take an absolute miracle for us to. Um, 
reverse this. Sydney kicked a 5-4 to 4-1 that quarter. I mean, look, there were times in that game, we, we, we reduced that margin to 11 points early in that second quarter. And I thought we just needed to fix up a couple of things. But look, Sydney, look, Sydney are playing all over us. They play the SCG. We, we just struggle with defending the SCG. There's no doubt about that. We do struggle with defending the SCG. We finally fixed up our scoring at the MCG, but our our the how do I say this? I I don't want to say it now because we're losing. But all year I've questioned McRae's coaching. I'll say it. I've said it all year. I've questioned McRae's coaching. I I mean, I I don't see where Will Hoskadelia gets a game every week. I, mean, I I just I just don't see it, and I don't see it today either. Where where is he? Anyway, that quarter went for thirty five minutes too. It was a long quarter, and Sydney kicked the last. Yeah, Sydney kicked one, two. Yeah, Sydney kicked three of the last four goals. That 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 really hurt. It looks thirty points down at half time. It's doable. But the way we're playing, it's it's not doable. We're not going to come back. We're, we're going to need to score at least 12 or 13 goals and restrict them to three or four, considering they're scoring every single time they go inside 50. I mean, what, can, can someone please explain more blanketed Darcy, more blanketed Franklin the last time we played them, and yet he... He's not on in this game. We've got Maynard on. I'm some of his coaching this week in today's game has just been like you can get out coached, but then there are games where you out coach yourself. I just put more. I, I thought he out coached himself against Geelong when he put more forward in the last minute and a half when scores were level. Why you can still you, you don't need to put your best defender forward when you're chasing the win. Sometimes you can still chase the win by making sure you don't lose. Trust your forwards to get the job done. Anyway, here we go. We have a look at the players. Now uh, we look at the disposals um, f for the Swans. Um, Mills has 17. Warner. 15, Florent 12, Blakey 11, Lloyd 10. Uh, for the Pies, Crisp 15, Lipinski 13, Pendlebury only had one position that quarter, 11, Dacos 10. Uh, in for the goal kickers for the Pies, Elliot and McCreary have two, Crisp, Cameron, Hoskin, Elliot 1. For the Swans, Franklin and Papley have two each, Warner, Rowbottom, Heaney, Reed, Parker, Clark and Stevens have the singles. In regards to the stats, Sydney 28 more disposals for the, oh, you know, let's have a look at the trends for the for the second quarter. Uh, look, only 13 more disposals, but 11 more contested, and a lot of that would have been the last four or five minutes they really turned it on. We laid seven more tackles. Um, inside 50s again, 14 inside 50s each. The inside 50s for the game are 30 each. Can you believe that? Just, they're, 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 Goal success is just better than ours. Our, our first, the first 15 minutes of our of that game, where they absolutely jumped us, absolutely wrecked us, where they kicked one, two, three, four, it was four, one to nothing. Midway through the first, midway through the first term, that that's that's the game, and when, and since then they've beaten us by five points. Um. As we have a look at the overall stats, yeah, so they've had 17 more contested, 18 more uncontested. We've taken one more mark, they've had five more marks inside 50, they've had six more hitouts, they've had six more clearances. And what's 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 been telling is the the rebound goal they've had, they had the amount of times we've kicked the goal, and they've got the center clearance, kicked it inside 50, and taken the mark and kicked it on back, kick a goal. I just, that's been the most frustrating thing. Inside 50 is 30 each. There you go, that, 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 that's it right there. It's 30 each. The inside 50s are 30 each. However, we've had um, eight scoring shots and they've had 18. 
that has it right there. Look, we're not playing in the grand final, and even if we did, we're not getting close to the Cats. I'm actually, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this. If I mean, barring a miracle, Sydney make the grand final, and they they wipe the floor with us tonight. You can just see it. That's just how this game's heading. I'm going to, I'm going to be barricaded for the Cats next week. I, I can't stand the Swans. I don't like this. I don't like the way they, they support. They're, they're only supporting them now because they're winning. Because they don't get a crowd at, at any other stage of the year. Their their players, Papley, does nothing except get on the end of a few. And the way the umpires carry on when they get there, three fifty meter penalties. I don't think there's been a game this year with three fifty meter that hasn't involved Richmond because they 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 they. They get screwed with 50 meter penalties. Let's let's call the spade a spade. But I don't think there's a game with 350 meter penalties that have been paid in a whole entire game. They had 350 meter penalties go their way in a half football. That one against Jack Ginnivan, that was a disgrace. Didn't even get a warning, and the umpire paid it. That's Stevic. How he's able a to continue umpiring Collingwood games, and b how he's gotten to 400 odd whatever games he's got. I'll never know. Anyway, it's half time. Uh, Sydney 11 7 73, leading Collingwood 7 1 43. It's 30 points. Um, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's, but it's a different 30 points. Sydney look like they're completely dominating us. I, I can't see us coming back from this. I don't think there's going to be a Collingwood miracle. And if there is, it'll be one of the great Collingwood miracles. Um, but yeah, I'll see you at three quarter time. I begged, I begged for this game to be over at half time. I resigned myself in my seat and said, that's it. When the Swans got, then when the Swans got 35 points up, I thought, you know what? At least I don't have to stress. And then we had to flip the switch and do this. And then he had that shot after the siren and he had to miss. Collingwood kicked 3-5 that quarter, 3-4 that quarter, sorry. No, I think that's wrong. We were sitting straight at half time, weren't we? Anyway, 3-4, we'll call it 3-4 that quarter to 2-3. To be 23 points down at three quarter time. <sighs> Here we go again. We're playing Sydney. Game's over. Goal kickers for the Swans. Uh, Papley and Franklin have two Warner, Heaney, Rowbottom, Parker, Stevens, McInerney, Clark, Reed, McDonald have one for the Pies. Elliot McCreary has two Cameron, Dacos, Crisp, Dacos, because both Dacos brothers kicked goals that quarter. Hoskin, Elliot, Ginnivan, the singles. In regards to disposals for the Pies, Crisp has 21, Pendlebury had a big third quarter. He has 20, Lipinski 16, Quainall, uh, Dacos, Nick 15. For the Swans, Mills 25, Warner 17, Parker 15, Florence. So, look, we had a really good quarter that quarter. Now, uh, 23 points down, 23. We have a look at the overall trends for that quarter. Uh, we kicked two goals, two of the last two goals, three. Um, we had four more disposals, one more contested possession. Um, we had three more inside 50s. Unfortunately, just couldn't put the score on the board. Again, um, we look at the overall. Look at the overall stats. Yes, yeah, so uh, they've had still had 16 more contested possessions. Uh, we've had 11 more uncontested possessions. Uh, they've had 11 more uncontested possessions. Five more markets off 50. But 12 more hitouts. What a what a difference Kruger makes. I've always said we need an extra marking forward. Kruger's at marking forward. Kruger's at marking forward. I reckon this is probably. I'd look. It's it's too late. That that. The first two minutes of the of the first quarter killed us for that game because look, I mean, twenty six points down before we even scored is just too much. But look, we and we're, and we're up on the inside fifties forty six to forty three, and our defence finally defended that quarter. It's amazing what happens when you when defence defends a little bit. But we're going to need to kick at least five goals this quarter, which means that the Swans. Are going to have their opportunity to score as well. So they're at a horror scoring. Oh, come on, Pies, just do it. Just do it. Just get into the grand final. Let's play this. Let's 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 play the cats. Let's go. Let's go. We're a destiny side. 
I can see it. Five by five points. That was my prediction. We're not going to win. But where are we? We're not going to win. Hey everyone, um, obviously it's the uh, the next day. Um, I didn't do this video yesterday because I was just too emotional. Um, in fact, today I'm still a little bit emotional. Um, it's still very raw, it still hurts quite a lot. Um, Colin would have lost the preliminary finals before. Um, I mean, we lost the preliminary final in 2019 against GWS and by four points, uh, we lost the 2007 brief final against Shalom by five points, and they didn't hurt like yesterday. Yesterday hurt because not just the year we had, which was unexpected, but I mean, you, 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 uh, look, I know people are going to say this is our greatest, but Sydney are the darlings of the AFL. You, and if you want proof of this, there's a website, I'm not sure if you heard of it, called AFL Tables. It's got the statistics of every single AFL game ever that's ever been played. Go on to Collingwood versus Sydney. Have a look how many trips Sydney have had to make down to Melbourne to play Collingwood. Not once since 2013. That's right. Sydney have not had to play Collingwood in Melbourne once since 2013. Not once since 2013. And people go, yeah, well, well what's that got to do with Sydney? Have a look at yesterday's result. Four 50 meter penalties. Four. Colin gave away four 50 meter penalties yesterday in a preliminary final. That's a disgrace. The, the, the one against Jack Ginevan, really, stepped on the line and gave away 50 without giving away. I've never seen them give away 50 meter penalties without a warning. They always give the player a warning. But because it's Sydney, didn't even give the player a warning. The Sydney player took a mark, the Collingwood player stood the mark, they gave him 50. Even um, the, uh, Sydney's second last goal, when they took the intercept mark over Darcy, when Darcy Moore passed it backwards to uh, Jeremy Howe, and that Sydney player took the intercept mark. That was 50 against the other Sydney player because he overstepped the mark. But the umpire gave him a warning. He didn't give him straight away 50. Four 50 metre penalties in a game of football. And you want to tell me that Sydney are the darlings. And then, of course, there's the Tom Papley decision. Pushed him in the back, pushed Darcy Moore square in the back. There was no contact to his head because one thing um, that Tom Papley is, is he's a diver. If Quaynor would have hit Papley's head, he would have went down immediately. The second Quaynor made con any contact to his head, he, just would have, he would have flopped straight down to his knees. And he didn't. And then he dropped the mark. The, the ball touched his fingers and hit the ground. And the umpire paid the mark. Don't worry about what Hamish McLaughlin says. Hamish McLaughlin is protecting his brother. Now, Hamish McLaughlin is allowed to commentate an AFL game. is an absolute disgrace. Um, you know, after years and years and years of hearing how Eddie Maguire shouldn't have been allowed to commentate Collingwood games because he was Collingwood president, we've got Hamish McLaughlin commentating preliminary finals with Sydney in them. We've got Jude Bolton commentating... Um, Sydney games, you've got, it's, 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 but that's okay. But it's only when Eddie McGuire was doing it that's that's that is biased. It's, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's 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 what hurts. That, that that the last two were the last two goals were clear infractions. Clear. One was a fifty meter penalty against the Sydney player, and the umpire didn't pay it, and it led to a Sydney goal. And then the last one against Darcy Moore was a clear push in the back. No head contact, no mark. And Papa got the goal. Now people go, oh, you know, you shouldn't have been 26 points. But from the outset, from the from the very outset of that game, from the very outset of that game, Sydney came in to, to rough up Collingwood. They did it from the start. And the amount of times they, you know, Collingwood play on the ground and they nudged the Collingwood player in the back, no free kick. They jumped on a Collingwood player who'd, they tackled the Collingwood player with, and then a third Sydney player jumped in with his knees. No free kick. Free kicks every other game of the week, but for some reason, well, we know the reason, no free kick. Um, so Collingwood, proudest punch. We kicked 4-5 in the last quarter. In fact, in the second half, we kicked 7-9 to 3-4. Um, we kicked 4-5 in the last quarter to 1-1 uh, to lose by one point. Um, 
In fact, you know, that, that last goal by um, Todd Papley, we then, the, the goal score by Brody Maichek a couple of minutes later, Woodhouse can have a kick the goal and then still solve a kick the goal and then the last two behinds um, were rushed. Five or six minutes went without. And then, I mean, even the fact that the, the behind was kicked and time off wasn't immediately called. The umpire let three seconds run before he called time off. It just, the untrained eye doesn't notice those things. But someone who looks out for these things, because I've, as soon as I saw Matt Stevich, who was commentating that, who was umpiring that game, I knew we were getting it done. And each of those contentious decisions was Matt Stevich. I'll tell you how I know. Actually, I'm not gonna tell you how I know, because you know there's no point getting into it. Um, yeah, that, that last quarter, absolute domination by Collingwood. Um, seven more disposals, six more contested possessions, and we still had one more tackle, uh, three more inside 50s, and kicked four goals to one. The fact that, you know, that like I said, that, that second half was just complete uh, domination. Um, I'm not even going to mention Sydney, um, because they had 25 players playing yesterday, and I'm not even going to um, mention them. Uh, in regards to the goal kickers for Collingwood, uh, Elliot kicked two, Hoskin Elliot two, McCreary two, uh, Josh and Nick Dacos kicked goals as well as side bottom, Cameron, Crisp, Majacek, Bianco and Ginnivan. The disposals for the Pies, Crisp was 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 amazing. Um, had got a, had a bit of a rough start to the game, but he he played on. Uh, Pendlebury twenty nine disposals, Nick Dacos twenty three, Darcy Moore twenty. When we finally put him on, Franklin, that, that's that's what changed the game. I just still don't understand why Maynard went on Franklin. I just anyway, uh, side bottom nineteen possessions. His second half was ginormous. Um, we, look, we we still had a few players that that were down. Um, you know, Bianco eight possessions. I mean, look, it was, I tried to support the kids throughout the whole final series, but yeah, look, he was always going to be completely out of his depth in that game. Uh, my check had a great last quarter, but look, he was he was down. Uh, McCreary and Hoskin Elliott, look, they both kicked two goals in the end, but look, they very, really had very little to no influence on that game. Um, you know, they, you know, McCreary was in there for his tackling pressure. Apparently, he, he laid one tackle. Um, Howe had another night. He had pretty much a final series to forget. Uh, Maynard final series to forget. Uh, Quainor final series to forget. Um, yeah, one thing I ought to say, stop doing interviews with newspaper articles about your upbringing. Win the game, win the premiership, then start doing the newspaper articles. Um, yeah, look, just really, still really sore, still really raw. I'm so proud of the boys, really, and the way we fought back against adversity, just did everything we could. Um, give my votes for the game, and give five votes to Crisp, he was just... Phenomenal in his 200th game. Uh, four votes to Pendles. He was sensational. Um, oh, yeah, Geordie also. He was... They got into his head in the game. Uh, four votes to Pendlebury. Uh, I thought uh, three votes to Darcy Moore, who blanketed Bay Franklin in the second half. Just made him complete non-factor. Um... I'm going to give only two votes to Kruger because when, I mean, Colin supporters have been saying it, we should have played Kruger from the start. He he made the difference because the man actually, you see them the way the man attacks the ball, he attacks the ball like a man possessed. And he gave two votes to Kruger. I thought he was he was a difference in the second half in the middle of the ground. Um, and I'm going to give uh, one vote to uh, Nick Dacos, who fought the tag. 23 disposals, so it's five to Crisp, four to Pendlebury. Uh, five to Crisp, four to Pendlebury. I forgot who I gave three to already. Um, anyway, so that's it. So Collingwood, our season's done. Thank you everyone who's followed Jimmy the Fat Man for these videos. It'll be the last Jimmy the Fat Man video about the football. Um, it'll be over to all things Collingwood now. Uh, I need to do the rest of the football videos. For my family, yours, peace and have a great day. One last thing, one last thing I want to put it in there. Tom Papley, if you're going to cheat, don't celebrate the way you did. You know what? 
don't celebrate Dory Clarkson, the most respected coach in the AFL, has called you out for being a cheat. Or that you're a diver. To see what you did yesterday. All I've got to say is, you better win the Premiership next week. Because you're going to have 25 million Australians that are going to be on you if you don't. You're going to be at a lot of people's disposal uh, profile pictures next week if you lose the way you carried on. Particularly considering you didn't deserve that last goal and you know it. You dropped the mark. You didn't get high contact. You're a disgrace to Australian football. And to the Australian Football League, the reason why you got that mega broadcast rights deal is because of clubs like Collingwood who supporters turn, in, turn up week in, week out. You look, there were 45,000 supporters there yesterday because of Collingwood. Sydney don't get 44,000 supporters to go. Have a look at Sydney's crowd week in, week out. They got their two biggest crowds this year in round 22 and the preliminary final were both against Collingwood because the Collingwood supporters went up there and turned out. The reason why is because we were the most attended. We were the most watched. That's why you got the mega broadcast rights deal. And then you treat us like that. Well, you know what? Look, I'm not watching the grand final next week. And I'm, it's not a protest because I know it's not going to change anything. Sydney are the darlings of the AFL. But I, I'm just not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch a product that is flawed, that is doctored, that is cheated. I'll say it again. And look it up. This is not a made up thing. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is not a thing. Sydney have not played Collingwood in Melbourne since 2013. I'll rest my case right there. Cheats.